everyone. Fox News is facing more legal troubles one week after the popular commentator Bill O'Reilly left the network amid harassment complaints. More than a dozen current and former employees have filed a class action lawsuit against the company. They claim they were passed over for promotions, humiliated and paid less than their white co-workers. In a separate complaint filed this week, a former Fox News employee claimed she was forced to quit in 2013 after her complaints about racial discrimination were ignored. Fox News denies that these complaints claims. Well, joining me now here in Los Angeles, civil rights and criminal defense attorney Brian Claypool. Brian, always good to see you. Nice seeing you, Aisha. Uh, you have looked through these claims, these allegations. Let me ask you right off the bat, how strong is the plaintiff's case here? Well, let's hold off on the firing squad <laughs> for Fox <laughs> News. All right, let's, let's put away the news <laughs> and the lethal injection. Okay. okay, not quite yet. Not just yet. Proving racial discrimination and harassment is a daunting task. I've had cases like this. And the devil is in the detail on these cases. And what I mean by that is these employees have to prove a couple things. They've got to prove that the racial discrimination and harassment actually happened. Now, we might think, oh, that's easy to prove. But you need credible, reliable evidence to prove that. For example, eyewitnesses. Mm -hmm. You need emails. You might need text messages if you have those, some kind of audio recording to prove that. Otherwise, it's the employee's word versus the employer's word. I always, I always advise my clients, if you're going to report something to the Human Resources Department, take a witness with you. Mm -hmm. Then they've got to prove that they reported this to Human Resources and that Human Resources didn't do a legitimate investigation. So, let me ask you this. Now we have Kelly Wright um, getting involved. Kelly Wright was a, an anchor correspondent on, on Fox News. Talk to me about whether having someone of his stature strengthens the case. Does it do anything to change the, the calculus of this case, having, yeah. having someone of, of, of his name recognition involved? That's a good point. I think it helps because a lot of the other employees work in the accounting department. Mm -hmm. They're more uh, in working in administrative jobs yeah. as opposed to being news anchors. So I think that helps on one hand. But on the other hand, he wasn't let go. He mm -hmm. wasn't... I don't think he's arguing that he was passed up for any kind of promotion. No, he's, he's saying, saying he was insulted and yeah, he but was... Bill, yeah, he's saying yes. that Bill O'Reilly O'Reilly didn't have him on his show. Mm -hmm. He was insulted by Bill O'Reilly. Told but, to sing the national anthem rather right. than actually... Okay, but, then, but then you get into another issue that you've got to prove. You've okay. got another element you've got to prove in this case. Then you have to prove damages. How have these employees been damages? Normally, Aisha, in wrongful termination cases, mm -hmm. employment cases, an employee is actually fired. Most mm -hmm. of these employees have not been fired. Mm -hmm. They are still working at Fox News. They're still garnering a salary. I want to put up um, a statement that was made uh, by some of the attorneys uh, representing some of the plaintiffs here, uh, by Douglas H. Wigdor and Jean M. Christensen, uh, the plaintiff's lawyers. They said, when it comes to racial discrimination, 21st Century Fox has been operating as it should be called, as if it should be called 18th Century Fox. We sincerely hope the filing of this race class action wakes 21st Century Fox from its slumbers, and it inspires the company to take a conciliatory and appropriate approach to remedy mm -hmm. its wrong. I mean, the, the point that they're making that there is a bad culture here that right. is at odds with where we are today, that is reminiscent of what we've heard in the sexual harassment right. um, cases, the allegations. I mean, does the it, mood music play into this? It does play into it, and it's too premature for these lawyers to be making those comments, Aisha. We don't have the evidence yet, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a quantum leap for somebody to allege pervasive racial discrimination and harassment versus actually proving that in a court of law. And here's another thing. Judith Slater was the comptroller mm -hmm. at Fox News. She's a she's, she's the named in she's the one, target. The They're yeah. saying, hey, we reported her to human resources. But does that prove that this is a cultural problem at Fox News. Let me pick up on that. Judith Slater, who was named in one of these complaints, has been fired by Fox. She was let go of in mm. February. Does that become a mitigating factor, i.e. Fox says, well, we took care of it. We fired her. Can they use that in court? You have a second career after this as being a <laughs> lawyer. Fantastic question. That's a double-edged sword. If I'm representing the, the Fox employees, I'm going to argue, well, you fired Judith Slater, so that proves that she was engaging in severe and pervasive racial discrimination and harassment. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that is, if I'm representing Fox News, I'm going to argue, hey, you came and reported this discrimination and, the, and this, this uh, 
this nefarious conduct by Ms. Slater. And we went out and we did an investigation of her and we fired her. Therefore, we didn't ratify her conduct. Oh. So it's it, going to be dicey. It's going to be dicey. Like you say, everyone needs to hold fire on this one. We yeah. don't know how it's going to play out. Yeah, let's not, let's not call the funeral home yet for Fox <laughs> News. <laughs> okay, Brian, a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Aisha. All right, quick break here.